This guy, he a visionary. The U.S. Attorney's Office in the Eastern District of Missouri announcing 34 suspects face federal charges. Authorities say the defendants are part of a group known as the Black Mafia family. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Exclusive, baby. More than two dozen arrested in a roundup of members and associates of the Black Mafia family. St. Louis! More than two dozen people were arrested this week in connection with charges including drug trafficking and financial crimes, the U.S. Attorney Slayer A. Fleming said Thursday. The arrests made by U.S. Marshals, federal agents, and local police follow a series of grand jury indictments. 34 people have been charged in connection with the investigation, most in the past few weeks. During the arrest and associated court-approved searches, officers and agents recovered large quantities of that F-ball, because I can't say it, but they got enough. It's a couple of pounds in of that, you know, M-E-T-H, firearms and cash. In detention here is Thursday, prosecutors described the arrests as members or associates of the Black Mafia family. But for now, they'll be called BMF, because you're all familiar with that. A motion seeking to have one of the defendants jailed until trial starts. The BMF hold itself out as a drug trafficking and money laundering organization distributing large quantities of narcotics in the St. Louis area and elsewhere. One of the defendants, Chad Brown, calls himself the junior boss of the BMF. Another detention motion says it has discussed drug trafficking by the BMF in multiple videos posted on various social media platforms. These indictments and arrests are targeted in an organization that did not just limit their crimes to drug trafficking. Others have been accused of laundering money for the organization or taking advantage of the pandemic to fraudulently obtain thousands of dollars in loans that were intended for struggling businesses and employees. Those include Chad E. J. Bo Brown, 51 years old, indicted on one count of bank fraud and one count of using a fake writing or document. He is accused of submitting a fraudulent IRS Schedule C4 to obtain a PPP loan. As noted above, bank fraud is a felony. Conviction for bank fraud carries imprisonment of up to 30 years and or a fine of up to $1 million. In addition, federal prosecutors will often seek forfeiture of assets. Intentionally making false statements or concealing a material fact to a federal agent or investigator is a federal crime, punishable by up to five years in prison and a fine of up to $250,000. Robert Lewis, 45 years old, was indicted on four counts of that F-ball distribution and one count of being a felon in possession of a firearm. Robert Honest Sims, 40 years old, was indicted on one count of conspiracy to distribute 500 grams or more a mixture containing that M-E-T-H, Samir Simpson Bay, 37 years old, was indicted on one count of distribution of 40 grams or more of that F-ball. Jeremy Wheelow Steele, 44 years old, was indicted on one count of conspiracy to distribute 400 grams or more of that F-ball and 500 grams or more of mixture containing that M-E-T-H. Carl Von Garrett, 53 years old, was arrested on one count of conspiracy to commit money laundering and two counts of money laundering and an indictment which alleges that nearly one million of drug proceeds were laundered between March and May of 2021. Tiffany J. Tiff B. of Meth Nelson, 42 years old, was indicted on one count of conspiracy to commit money laundering and four counts of money laundering. She is accused of laundering the proceeds of illegal activity. Anytime we are able to dismantle an organization involved in selling the big four, the F-ball, that M-E-T-H, that heroin and cocaine, it's a big deal said the special agent in charge, Michael A. Davis, head of the Drug Enforcement Administration. That's the DEA in Missouri, Kansas, and Southern Illinois. The scale of this Midwest criminal operation is uncommon. So it's no wonder that it took the combined resources of the federal, state, and local law enforcement to bring the operation to an end. Protecting our citizens is the DEA's primary goal and the reward is 
worth it. This week's takedown demolished multiple drug trafficking organizations, which were the main suppliers of that METH, that F-ball, and that cocaine. In the St. Louis region, the special agent in charge of the FBI St. Louis division said, quote, today's arrest of more than two dozen suspects by the St. Louis Gateway Strike Force is a culmination of a four-year investigation into a world of violence frequently associated with drug trafficking. The St. Louis Gateway Strike Force is a collaboration of federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies to combat violent gang crimes and drug trafficking throughout the Bay region the goal of every criminal organization is to make money. The special agents of the IRS criminal investigation, that's the CI, are the best in the business at following money trails leading to a criminal's door, says special agent in charge Thomas Murdoch. If we can track where the money is coming from and where it's going, we can disrupt the financial structures that support criminal networks. But let's get into it. J-Bo stand for Junior Boss. He said, from here on out, I'm calling you J-Bo. You just knocked out 27 bricks. No, no, it was 33 bricks in less than, less than two days. Another thing that I was really good at was recruiting people. I'm a, I'm a, um, a fast learner, so I kind of caught on to it and, you know, it was some bumps and 34 suspects face federal charges. Authorities say the defendants are part of a group known as the Black Mafia Family. Fox 2's Jeff Bernthal joining us live downtown with why this case is expected to put a major dent in local drug trafficking. Jeff. Yeah, Jasmine, this is how one federal authority characterized things. He said this is a takedown of major drug trafficking operations that are responsible for the main supply of methamphetamine, cocaine and fentanyl into the St. Louis area. There's even an accusation that drug traffickers profited by applying for COVID relief loans. The opioid crisis right now is claiming thousands of lives a year. The investigation conducted by the St. Louis Gateway Strike Force, part of the organized crime drug enforcement task force, including members of federal, state and local law enforcement. I think that dismantling this organization is going to make a significant impact on community safety. Officers and agents recovered fentanyl, methamphetamine, firearms and cash. Those indicted include Carl Von Garrett, accused of laundering nearly one million dollars of drug proceeds in a three month period. Tiffany Tiff BMF Nelson faces money laundering charges. Chad J. Bo Brown accused of submitting a fraudulent tax form to obtain a PPP loan. Robert Lewis is accused of distributing fentanyl and being a felon in possession of a firearm. Robert Honest Sims faces a drug charge related to meth. Samir Simpson Bay faces a drug distribution charge related to fentanyl. Jeremy Wheelow Steele indicted on a drug charge related to fentanyl. Authorities say cooperation between federal, state and local authorities was key. And people should really rest easy that we're out there every day working to protect uh, the community, to protect their families from the opioid scourge. And we're just really trying to make the St. Louis area a safer place to live. Some of the agencies we're told involved with this investigation include the Drug Enforcement Administration, the FBI, the IRS criminal investigations, the U.S. Postal Inspection Service, St. Louis County Police Department, as well as other members of the St. Louis Gateway Strike Force. Now, now this right here is opinion based. So if you want to disagree, then go ahead and disagree. It's cool. Why is this worse than the first one, right? There's more people arrested than the first one. And I get all that. The problem with this is, is you have somebody from the quote unquote old school who try to blend in and all that. He didn't learn from the last time. And with that happening, now you have over 30 more people indicted with this. You got your old lady snatched. The problem that I have with this whole entire thing is that why did you believe you were smarter? Bro, y'all went to the feds. Did you not think they were still watching? There's a video I did about two years ago, probably going on three now, where I literally say, hey, this PPP loan stuff, bruh, niggas is going to jail. I got laughed at. I got laughed out of the house. 
And this ain't funny, so I'm not going to laugh now. Okay, just a little bit. The funny messed up part about all of this stuff is look at the continuous impact now that we going to have on our community. More black fathers gone. We don't have any grandpas. Y'all just took grandpa and dad up out the house. The oldest cat is 50 something years old, 51 years old, 40 year olds, 50 year olds going to jail. Late thirties, bro. This right here is the part of your life where you get to where you're supposed to be the leader. This is why we don't have leaders in the hood. These niggas still want to be young niggas. One thing that I don't, I don't even want to say respect or nothing like that because I don't wear jewelry. If you wear jewelry, all right, that's cool. If it do something to you, make you feel whatever it make you feel, it don't have that effect on me. So I don't know. But one thing I can tell y'all is when I see somebody that's over 50 years old and they still rocking chains and they got the hat backwards and all of that stuff and everything like that and they're not of major influence, I got questions for that. Because at this age, you're supposed to be putting on a suit. You're supposed to be jumping into what's called your dog years. From 40 to 50 years old, you're supposed to be planning for the rest of your life because you're supposed to ride off into the sunset. Also, being able to look at the younger cats and go, not over there, come over here. So with J-Bo getting arrested, bro, I got to wonder. Because now you're facing 35 years. If they, they're not going to convict him of 35 years. I can guarantee y'all that. He probably going to settle for about maybe 10 to 7. So get up in his upper 50s, turn around and get out in his 60s. And then what do you have? They're going to take everything you own. So now when you're in your 60s, who do you come home to? Why does anybody care? The thing is, is people like J-Bo, bro, once you get out, bro, you stay out. It's called a second chance for a reason, but it's also called a revolving door for a reason. They don't have to set y'all up because y'all set yourselves up with this thought that you are smarter than the people who brought you down. One of the worst things that people are not paying attention to is you're able to track money. I don't think people understand this. Go look at the Pusheisty case all over again. Bruh, they read the money from the numbers off of his pictures. Y'all is in a space like St. Louis. Do you know how hot St. Louis is? Yeah, Chicago been up. Jacksonville been up. Atlanta been up. Dallas been up. Memphis been up. But St. Louis has been up. Whether you in East St. Louis and Illinois or you over here in regular old St. Louis and Missouri. Or Missouri, depending on who you are. <sighs> when people think they're smarter than the system, that's how they get caught because the system was designed to get them. The reason why this is worse because you just destroyed another generation of black kids without fathers who had to tap right there on the damn window. And y'all pushing that fin ball, bro. Come on. But y'all let me know y'all thoughts in this room. Did I get it wrong? Did I get it right? If I get it right, share it. Keep your people aware. Subscribe. Turn on that bell to stay notified. And, uh, yeah, bro. Also, too, I want y'all to, to bear with me on this one. I got something to say. But I'll catch y'all on the SETI Nash Reloaded channel. Because this is pissing me off. They used to say, words couldn't hurt me. Videos is my name, they getting thirsty. Go ahead and put them in a hearse. It's getting murky this time, I deserved it. I'm ready for whatever war said.